100 years of collective experience in critical military communication networks. Our acquired knowledge in this sector has driven us to develop the next generation of connectivity. Now, meet the co-founders of Windtalker Innovations. CEO Matt Perdue is a United States Air Force veteran who served for 10 years, followed by eight years in the Air National Guard as Director of Command and Control for Future Plans and Programs, where he was responsible for IT projects with a portfolio valued at over $650 million. Matt developed requirements for integrating emerging technologies and executing projects for NORAD BCSF future development. He also served as Air Battle Manager, where he routinely controlled over $3.2 billion in United States Air Force and Alaska National Guard assets. Chief Technology Officer Ryan Luther's 20-year military career included responsibilities such as Mission Commander, Operations Test and Requirements Director, Inspector General, and Weapons Officer. As Mission Crew Commander for the Western Air Defense Sector, Ryan commanded the Homeland Defense System for 72% of the continental United States and coordinated efforts with 75 federal, state, and joint DOD agencies to defend the president and national security interests. Ryan was also responsible for over $1 billion in projects that included research and development, contract bidding, and final deployment. So, first of all, we want to thank everybody for coming out uh, this morning to uh, the 20 or yeah, the 2020 uh, CES government 15th anniversary uh, this morning. We're so proud to be here, and, and really appreciate it. The only way that this could have been better is if we had the 7 a.m. slot. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Seriously, though, uh, we want to thank. Uh, let's see, Karen Chupka, uh, Gary Shapiro. Charlie Armstrong, Dr. Barry West, uh, Don Ups, and, and Chrissy Kuhn for having us here. Uh, we're really excited to talk to you about, you know, the technology that we're building uh, and, and what we've seen here walking these halls over the past week uh, at CES and, and what we've seen at CES government. We really, we feel like we're living in the future right now. Yeah, we've really seen some amazing stuff, but at the same time, we know that there's a lot more to be done, um, and we're excited to uh, talk through that with you and our vision of the future. Yeah, so like, can we get a show of hands? Everybody basically uh, flew in here, we're, we're guessing, right? How many of you had problems with, uh, with Wi-Fi while you were in flight? <laughs> Seriously, guys, yeah. I know, like everybody. I know I did, absolutely. Right. Yeah, and, and I, I know that we've all experienced, you know, the circle of death when we're trying to uh, stream a video and, and, and had that yep. pain. It's absolutely obnoxious. And, yes. You know, like, what about drop calls, right? So you're you're on a cell call and, and you know, it just drops all of a sudden, uh, just happened to us the other night. Yeah, and then being in tech, we do a lot of video conferences, so we see a lot of laggy video and even yep. the Max Headroom audio <laughs> that we've all experienced takes us back to the 80s, right? Yeah, that's right. So, you know, when you, when you think about all these things, I mean, we're actually addressing real problems, right, that we keep, that we keep solving with linear solutions, uh, you know, and, and so we wanted to, to come to you guys today and, and sort of give you a, uh, an example of what it is that we're trying to solve for. Yeah, so uh, some examples that I think we've seen and experienced, you know, if you guys went to the Knights game uh, and tried to uh, send a text or uh, take a picture and send that on social media or even post a video, um, getting that through is difficult. We even saw when we were out at dinner uh, the other night that uh, the cellular tower that we were trying to uh, Google search from um, we had good connection, but we didn't have any throughput, right? Yep, and that's five not, bars. <laughs> right. And, and, and that's not any carrier issue, right? That's, that's a saturation issue. And that's not a cellular issue. That happens on Wi-Fi as well. Um, so uh, what, what is important to us is that if that tower goes down or multiple towers go down or even an entire network goes down in a city, that becomes a lot more than just an issue for, for us or an inconvenience for us, that right. now becomes a national security issue as well as a management issue for that city and that state, um, especially in a national disaster. Yeah, absolutely. And so we, we've talked about this already a couple of times. Like the problem with current network designs uh, is that they can't handle the increasing uh, data requirements that we have 
uh, that are growing exponentially, and we keep trying to solve these problems with these linear solutions uh, over and over. So it's pretty clear we're not living in the future quite yet, right? And we need some exponential solutions to get there. Uh, so we all know that we're in the midst of a fourth uh, industrial revolution, and that's bringing data, uh, physical, digital, and biological spheres all together and demanding that we have connectivity and content all the time, and not just all the time, but in real time. Right, exactly. Uh, and so now you've got the advent of AI autonomous vehicles. You guys have all seen this stuff, uh, hopefully, over the course of the past week. Uh, you know, you've got AR, VR, the Internet of Things. Um, they all require what Ryan was just talking about, that, that demand for connectivity all, this, all the time, right, to exchange that information. So yeah. when we get to the point where we're upgrading to our Star Wars-esque holographic FaceTime, uh, you know, our, our Rosie the Robot, uh, AI-enabled maid, right, how are we going to pass that data and keep those guys connected all the time? Who else needs that maid? <laughs> I know I do, man. Uh, but I don't, I don't want to see any holographic, you know, communication in your boxers, Matt. No, like, no let's, problem. Let's keep it clean. Okay. So, you know, we believe that these problems in communications can't be solved by just increasing speeds or throwing more satellites into space, right? And because we all, all know that that's congested space. So what we need to do is figure out ways of uh, having faster connections in addition to existing infrastructures. Right. No, absolutely. And so, you know, if you guys, if everybody is experienced, I'm sure you all have, right? You're, you're sitting in traffic uh, in a picture very much like this, right, where you have, um, you know, a, a tunnel or a bridge and you're just staring at the brake lights ahead of you. 5G is essentially a new bridge or a new tunnel, right? And the 5G devices are going to be a new car, but you're still staring at the same brake lights. Uh, you know, and, and so what we're trying to solve is that problem. Yeah, it becomes that circling wheel of death in physical reality, right? right? Exactly. You're just watching paint dry. That's uh, maddening. So um, osmosis isn't constrained by those roads um, and, or, or pathways, and it's not constrained by those vehicles or, or, or media on which it transports. Um, it looks over the top and makes connections uh, based on the environment that, that you're in. Uh, so it transcends those roadways and makes those direct connections. Uh, the way in which we do that is through a self-healing nature. And that self-healing nature, by automatically shifting to the best path, also allows the network to load balance, which is really critical when we talk about, you know, hitting that one tower or that one Wi-Fi right. access point that's, that's jammed up, right? We get beyond that and, and we move to other paths that are open uh, to keep that information flowing. So we know that uh, right now in the public and private sector, billions of dollars are being spent uh, to try to get us to the next generation of communication. Uh, what we intend to do is help the industry uh, and, and hopefully partners on both the commercial and the government side to get there faster, more effectively, and at a much lower cost. Right, with that capex and opex reduction that is just so important. Absolutely. So without further ado, what we'd like to do is introduce you to Osmosis, and we're going to play a quick video that kind of explains in visual terms what it is that we're doing. Over the last half century, major developments in telecom technology have occurred in space. There's no denying the impact these advancements have had on humanity's ability to connect and communicate. In fact, we were inspired by this technology. Now, the future of communication is coming back to Earth. We had this idea. Why not put miniature cell towers in the hands of billions of people to create a revolutionary new network architecture? Introducing Osmosis empowering people to connect across the planet. Osmosis is a visionary software solution that's forging a world of infinite connections by enhancing the potential of current networks, making them inherently secure and unfettered by constraints. The connectivity universe is changing rapidly. The limitations of current systems are being upgraded with faster, more economical technology. But even these new players lack real security, resilience, and flexibility. The Osmosis Network is self-healing. It creates a path of least resistance by using the most efficient channels available. The result? Osmosis can stand alone, keeping people connected with one another even when existing networks are bogged down or when no other technology is available. Osmosis sits over the top of existing networks 
meaning no infrastructure development is necessary. That also means seamless integration with current devices and networks, while extending their reach and passing more data with greater security. We are transcending humanity's communication barriers by building a secure, self-sustaining network and providing a blanket of connectivity available to all. So what you guys just saw there is, uh, you know, a demonstration of, of what our vision is for Osmosis. Um, you know, it's an elegant, lightweight, software-based solution uh, that allows every single radio-enabled device to become a, a router or a cell tower, uh, all the way up to uh, aviation platforms that we can turn into very low-Earth orbit satellites. And so Ryan's going to walk you guys through this next video, though. Uh, you know, but we wanted you to see this so that you can see how incredible this idea is uh, for this infrastructureless. Uh, type of communication that, that we're trying to create. So before we get to that, just real quick, I hope that you guys all think that this is as incredible as we do. Uh, but I do want to take a moment to explain to you uh, why we named it Osmosis. Um, so we talked about the self-healing nature and the load balancing capabilities of the network. Uh, we thought that that uh, had a lot in kin to the chemistry definition of osmosis about uh, balancing on both sides of a membrane. Right, um, so, so that's the uh, auspices of, yeah. of osmosis. No, 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 thanks for pointing that out, actually. Yeah, and what we'd like to do is uh, show you a quick uh, recording of uh, a lab demonstration that we've got going on, if that could be queued real quick. Ah, great. So um, what you see here is um, a, um, an aviation uh, environment, um, and what's important is, uh, that self healing nature that we talked about is being shown um, in, in this aviation simulation where um, all the gray lines are the connectivity of devices, in this case uh, aircraft, communicating with each other uh, to establish a network and, and have that network health. And then the blue lines uh, show that data communication. Yeah, and so this is actually, we knew that we had to roll up our sleeves uh, and do some hard work uh, over the past three years. And, and so this is the, the way that the current hub and spoke architecture works for networks. Uh, and, and we had to break this. Uh, we knew that it was the first rule that we were gonna have to break was uh, the traditional way that, that information and data is passed from one device to another. Uh, and so on the next slide, uh, you're gonna see Osmosis is this radio-enabled capability that's going to actually enable the fourth industrial re revolution and the next evolution uh, for communication technologies. Um, what you see here is that self-healing path that basically is connecting uh, across the mesh without that hub and spoke anymore. All with just a software download. Right. So we're pretty excited about that. So uh, we've been talking about the, the problem set, and we know it's exponential in nature. So this graph shows a 46% year-over-year growth. One of the problems is, is trying to solve an exponential problem, uh, we have physical limitations. And so as we're trying to expand out uh, architectures, we know that that infrastructure uh, grows in a linear fashion. Uh, so what we're trying to do is expand upon that linear growth and provide an exponential software solution right. that allows the connectivities and additional pathways. And like Matt said, reducing the load actually going to the infrastructure because if it's just a local communication, then there's no need to go to a tower or an right. access point. So hopefully, uh, you can see the, the, the vision that, that we're trying to get to. Absolutely. And so, you know, 5G holds so much promise, and it's absolutely necessary for us to continue to move forward in these evolutionary steps. Uh, but what we wanted to do, and we talked about this on the roundtable the other day, was, uh, and I'm sure you guys did too, yep. uh, was we have to be thinking about what, what is after 5G? What's in five years? What's in 10 years? How are we going to enable autonomous vehicles? Uh, how are we going to enable autonomous drones? You know, and, and one of the things that we're really focused on right now is, is as we deploy this solution, we have to be um, uh, respective uh, or, or respectful to the, the capital uh, outlay that we're talking about because you're talking about $3.7 trillion over the next 10 years being committed to, to physical infrastructure for 5G. Uh, that means more towers, that means more fiber, new devices for consumers, right? Uh, so I know everybody loves their iPhone every single September you want to buy a new one. Uh, <laughs> but it'd be great if we actually didn't have to do that every single year. Um, you know, and so again, we're, we're talking about a linear evolution to an exponential problem. Uh, 
And, and so osmosis, the hope for osmosis is to deploy in these network uh, architectures and take that, that communication where you've got your voice and text message, and we can take that off of the backhaul carriers uh, and, and actually free that bandwidth up for things like autonomous vehicles uh, and, and drones. And provide happier consumers, right? Yeah, and through, happier consumers. Through cost-effective Absolutely. connectivity is really what we're after. Uh, and then we can also make safer communications uh, by adding security and other th stuff that we'll talk about yep. here on the next slide. So uh, one thing to know is that we built Osmosis as a network enabler. Uh, so we didn't build it as a competitor to any common networks. Right. Um, so in that, in that way, we envision Osmosis to be the glue that binds uh, these current disparate networks um, into one seamless solution and not just a seamless solution, but one that has multi-level security uh, to provide seamless end-to-end -end encryption. Uh, so in our network, every message set is encrypted, ed every data path is encrypted. Um, and we, we didn't stop there. We really wanted seamless integration for the user. Uh, so no longer you know, will you have to go, yes, I wanna manually accept uh, my connection to a Wi-Fi. It just will automatically keep you connected right. seamlessly around the globe. Right, and so and by doing that, we're actually extending the user base out, right? So now I can use Ryan's phone to talk to him secure, or talk through him securely uh, to some of you audience members out here when you're outside of line of sight to a tower. Uh, I mean, this is huge if you're talking about, uh, you know, natural disasters and, uh, and national security issues, or even if you're just lost in the woods, but you, you know, you have line of sight to an aircraft or uh, a, a passing by car, or, something of that nature, right? That's, that also leads to performance enhancement because we go back to taking those, those packages off of that traditional infrastructure where right now you send a text message and it goes to a tower that goes to a, a wire line that goes back to another tower and comes back to inside this room because you just were texting somebody 50 feet away from you. Uh, the last part of that is back to that CapEx and that OpEx part. That's actually where our goal is as, as that enabler that Ryan was talking about, not as the competitor. Our goal is to save on the, uh, you know, just a fraction of that three trillion plus dollars over the next 10 years is huge revenue generation streams uh, for our commercial partners as well as saving the government tons of money for the taxpayers. So, yep, we rolled up our sleeves, we got busy, uh, and, and basically wanted to make sure that we were nurturing these commercial and, and government partnerships. Uh, so Ryan's gonna walk you through a couple of them right now. Yeah, so we'd love to focus on government since that's our audience today, right. obviously. Um, so, uh, one of the first things that we want to talk about is the DOT. So, we've been talking to uh, federal DOT about um, the current networks that they have. So, they have uh, uh, sometimes multiple networks for each mode of transportation. Each one of those networks has slices of spectrum that are allocated there, and there's multiple opportunities. One opportunity is when you're geographically separated, a great example is maritime and automotive. Um, why not? co-use those spectrums, right, to get more data throughput and to get more resiliency. Um, our network supports that multi-spectral capability. Um, another example is just being able to communicate between modes of transportation. Uh, so our network is multimodal in nature, so it can talk to planes, trains, automobiles, mobile, wearable, right? So, so now, um, you have an opportunity to provide safety and anti-collision avoidance Absolutely. and things like that. And pass the information you have to when you need to. Exactly, uh, and we all know that AI machine learning are coming around, autonomy is coming around, all that brings big data. And that big data um, is important not only for those safety and, and, and edge computing cases, but they're also important to uh, drive data-driven de decisions for the DOT. Um, so they can make good decisions on updating critical infrastructure. Right. So we're also a uh, partner with DHS. So we currently have a small business innovation research grant from DHS. Um, and our goal there is to connect air, land, and sea boots on the ground uh, to drones and aircraft in the air, as well as ships and boats uh, in the sea. And, and we're really excited about that. They're also, uh, DHS is also very interested in our network sensor capabilities uh, that we're working for them, as well as right now, um, many times in the Homeland Security uh, realm, they, they will uh, request military assistance and that brings the DOD into play. And so 
being able to connect those two spheres and do a, a, a proper coordination and handoff of those efforts is extremely important, and we're going to provide that connectivity. Right, and, and so that was actually part of the uh, the frustration that Ryan and live, Ryan and I lived through uh, in our years in Homeland Defense uh, with NORAD was you had 13 different networks and 23 different weapon systems inside of headquarters NORAD uh, that couldn't talk to one another. And, and so when we set out to build osmosis, we, we wanted to make sure that it was agnostic in nature to the protocol that was being transmitted, uh, and that we could utilize those previously stovepiped or siloed uh, network infrastructures and allow that information to communicate at the IP layer. Yeah, so we did that and we made it uh, resilient to jamming. Uh, we made it not satellite dependent, which is huge to uh, multiple government and military organizations right now. And we made it uh, multi-spectral so that, uh, I'm sorry, multi-domain secure so that we can partner uh, and execute around the globe with right. our nation partners. So then that all wraps up really nicely into smart city infrastructure and actually having smart city enabled uh, capabilities that will allow all this data that we just were talking about to pass seamlessly, securely, dependently so that you don't have drones flying into your kids or your dogs, uh, you know, or knocking you off your bicycle. Uh, and allowing for those IoT sensors and those, those smart traffic sensors to, to be able to pass the information back to the local municipalities when they need to. So right now we have uh, eight patents and those cover uh, the network and sensor capabilities, positional capabilities that we've been talking about as well as trademark and, and patents. But the important thing to realize is that osmosis isn't tied down uh, to a particular industry or, or sector. It can be applied um, across the board to any radio enabled device and hit any vertical and we can license that capability. Absolutely, and so these are just some of the, uh, some of the few verticals that we're talking about. Uh, you know, and we've, we've showed you a little bit about the aviation component. Uh, we've showed you a little bit about, uh, you know, smart city, DOD, DHS, DOT, and all those partners are very important to us. Uh, and, and so right now, what we want to do is uh, let Ryan go ahead and, and walk you through, for the first time ever, publicly, uh, <laughs> a demo of, of what it is that we're actually doing. Great. So what you're going to see on the, on the screens to the left and the right uh, are four, five phones in our lab. The left phone that's zoomed in on right now actually has connectivity to a Wi-Fi access point. You can see on the screen that it's showing the connectivity of the nodes uh, and which ones are connected. So the uh, four phones on the right are completely off-grid. They don't even have a SIM card in them. Um, and they're connected through osmosis to that phone on the left. So the demonstrator um, is going to go to YouTube. Uh, is going to queue up four HD videos, and it's going to stream uh, four HD videos on all of those unconnected devices. So this is a great demonstration of how our network can extend out existing coverage and existing networks in a very small lab environment. Um, and it can do it at speed and with security. So you can see uh, they're streaming. We don't have buffering issues. It's, it's pretty high performance. Next, you're going to see that demonstrator uh, go to a chat application um, and send a text message uh, to the phone on the left. You're going to see that uh, pop up. There you go. Uh, demonstrating the off-grid capability that we don't need any existing infrastructure to send uh, messaging through osmosis. So the last thing uh, you'll see the demonstrator do on the phone in the middle is uh, he's going to go to the internet and pull up a website. Happens to be windtalker.com. <laughs> Feel free to check it out. Uh, we've been working on that website uh, since we came out of stealth mode just uh, a, f a few, uh, yeah. seems like months ago, but uh, I think it's February. Been, yes. Uh, yeah. So uh, hopefully you appreciated that demo. Um, we really do think that this is the way of the future. We know that there's many steps to get there, um, but this is a solution that can be uh, downloaded and installed right now and help existing infrastructure right now as we see it, right. as well as grow to the future with millimeter wave and beyond. Uh, and we really look forward to working with all of you in the room uh, and industry to make that happen. Yeah, and so the last thing for you guys would be, uh, here's a number for you to text message us uh, to, to get more information from us or, uh, you know, we can, we can flow some information to you as we continue to update stuff uh, and we'll respond uh, with our banking information so that you can <laughs> deposit checks in our accounts. 
Thanks so much, guys. We really appreciate it, seriously. Yeah, thanks, uh, everybody, for your time.